It's Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve. It's time to take a long, deep breath. The long season of Advent is over. It's time to breathe in the sweet breath of Christmas, the sweet, clean breath of the new one. And in that baby of the manger, who has come to bring new life into the world in so great a need of peace and of mercy. It's time to stop fussing with gifts and fussing with decorations. It's time to put wax in the floor. It's time for you and me to stop what we're doing and take rest. It's time to bask once again in the pure glow of the manger. And remember both the baby of the manger and the man of the cross. St. Luke felt a real and urgent need to tell his story. And the purpose in the telling the story of Jesus' birth was to help those first century Christians and us understand that the nativity of the Son of God happened and that it was a gift for all people and for all time. In simple and elegant language, he told the world that an incarnation had occurred. The Son of the or the God of the universe and become man. Not the image of a man, but the light of a man, but bone and flesh, high, sinuous <coughs> human being. He wanted to share the good news that the Messiah had come into the world and was a gift to all mankind, both Jew and Gentile. And after that humble beginning, that humble beginning in Bethlehem born, the work of the cross, the big nation. There are millions of people across the earth tonight that are celebrating Christmas. The tradition of gift giving has developed out of God's gift to the world on that first Christmas. People are exchanging gifts, they're <coughs> extending greetings, they're singing carols. And of those millions, perhaps 10% will make their way to church to pay homage to the Lord. <coughs> and unfortunately, an even smaller number will take the message of Christmas into their hearts and into their lives. Into their lives. You know, a couple of weeks ago, Linda and I watched a, a TV program that was hosted by Tom Brokaw uh, detailing many of the events of 1968. For us, the pivotal event was our wedding. But there were a few other things that happened. And some of those events continue to influence our lives and actions even 40 years later. One of the things he reminded us of was three astronauts who were all being the moon on that Christmas Eve. 39 years ago. They were on a mission to the moon and there they celebrated Christmas from orbit just above the lunar surface. They showed us what the astronauts saw. A beautiful view of the blue earth rising above that stark rear of the landscape. Then we heard one of them read the story of creation the story from Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Foreman closed that letter telecast with these words. Good night, good luck, and Merry Christmas. And God bless all of you. You know, perhaps this night is best viewed not from a manger with the smells and, and the feel of the bar, but, but from a distance, perhaps a great distance, like the astronauts. Perhaps the events of that first Christmas should be viewed not in Bethlehem, or even the hillside where the shepherds continue in their flocks, but from a hill near Jerusalem named Golgotha. For the miracle of the incarnation occurred for only one reason. And that reason was the crucifixion and 
and resurrection. Not a man <coughs> that the man's a cloth, but of a man. A man stripped naked and bleeding, dying to wash away the sins of mankind. 